Andreas, when I first heard about the multiverse many decades ago, it was metaphysics, it was uh, science fiction, and, and just good fun. Now, fast forward, it seems like conventional wisdom, that everybody believes in it. Um, you have some particular critiques of the multiverse, and I really need to know what they are. I certainly do. Yes, the, for me, the multiverse, well, I, I'm very concerned about the, the way people are using the tools of physics to, to study the multiverse. Probably my biggest problem is actually probability. Right. So, so um, I've um, developed a perspective on probability where I've linked basically every time we use probability in everyday life, and we use it all the time, whether we even think about it, what's the chance, you know, what's the chance of rain, what's the chance, um, you know, I'm going to want to go, what am I going to want to eat tonight when I go shopping, all, all these things. We, we insurance, intuitively, insurance is, probably insurance is more, more <laughs> sort of practical yeah. you know, kind of hand of application. Um, it, I've argued, I've convinced a lot of people, although not everyone, <laughs> that every time we use probability, it's actually linked to quantum uncertainty. And, and it's linked via the chaotic processes that, that form, that the particles form in our body, in, our, in, in, in the world around us. They're well-known chaotic processes, um, but what I've done is with my student, um, Dan Phillips, connected the dots between the, the quantum uncertainties down at small levels and how those chaotic processes bring those quantum uncertainties into every part of our life. So how does that then uh, affect the multiverse? Theory? So what that tells us is that everything we know about probability comes from quantum uncertainty. Okay. And when you go and look at the multiverse, and, and actually that whole notion doesn't change how we, I, I don't ch change how I think about probability in everyday life at all. It's, it's exactly, we've got it right. Sure, sure. We, we know what we're doing. But, but we, people sometimes rush to take those ideas to the multiverse and they actually, take situations where everyone has agreed there is no quantum probability assigned to certain questions. So basically when you get to the multiverse, the um, many important questions become questions without quantum probability answers. So, 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 so in the essential point is that when you have a multiverse, there's many copies of you, there's many copies of me. If I'm going to do an experiment and I want to know the outcome, which, which copy do I look at for, 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 for the outcome? And you need to know the probability of which one. Mm. And, and Don Page, who's here, actually showed in very simple terms that there's no quantum, no quantum probability assigned to that question of which copy are you. Mm. And, and so what I say is you can't answer that question. If you, if you, if you don't know which copy you are, you can't. You can't assign a probability to it. Well, the, the two of the ways to generate uh, an infinite number of universes or a very large number of universes are one through uh, uh, eternal chaotic inflation, and another very different one is the multi-world theory. Right. So those are two probabilistic kinds of things that are different kinds of mechanisms. Very important, actually, yes. And so the, the, the kind of multiverse you get from the quantum branching in the ever right. worlds or right. whatever language you want to yeah. use, yeah. That's, in my view, legitimate because the, that branching, the quantum mechanics is assigning probabilities as you go. Right. So, so that's. So, are you a very, many, many world or I, ever I read? Am, ever, I am. Ever read, yeah. I, the, the things I'm talking about, you can you can understand from the ever point of view or other points of view. Not every point of view, but, but, <laughs> but like Copenhagen, right. some, some of the others. So, um, I try not to inject that into into my. My, my most important comments on probability, but it is part of my intuition. I do think okay. like an Everettian, so it's, it does slip in. Okay, so, but, but how about the uh, chaotic uh, eternal inflation? So that's where you run into this trouble where the eternal inflation generates many copies of you, yes. infinitely many. Right, right. And, and, so th and, and if you don't have any way of assigning probabilities, mm -hmm. you, you don't know, um, you don't know now in how much? to answer. Now, now there's an interesting twist. So I've been very harshly critical of the multiverse with all the measure problems. But one of the interesting things that I've, so, so and I, I wrote this probability paper really to, to, to try to hammer it home to, to the multiverse. But a very interesting thing happened, which is that I realized what this project is really telling me is that certain questions just don't have answers. And maybe that's okay. So maybe some multiverse theories don't need to answer those questions. And, and, and it's actually convinced me 
that maybe I should be a little bit more open-minded <laughs> about the multiverse to the extent where maybe there's enough symmetry. If there's enough symmetry where it doesn't matter which copy you are, mm -hmm. then you should be fine. Or if the which copy is just has to do with a couple of quantum events, that maybe you can assign a probability to them. What about the infinities that eternal chaotic inflation generate? So there's a so maybe the infinities are are okay if there's enough symmetry, but I'm very concerned that there are certain uh, certain ways people are thinking about the multiverse that use those infinities to hide really important assumptions. Hmm. And, and the key place that happens is as relates to the arrow of time. How so? So the arrow of time is a very tricky topic in cosmology because it, um, it's pretty much agreed that the way we have an arrow of time is to give the universe a very special starting point. So the arrow of time can be tracked by the increase of entropy. Mm -hmm. And so it stands to reason that if you start with very low entropy, um, a lot of order it, there's, in the system. There's a yeah, a lot of order in the system. There's a chance for entropy to go up, and, and you can track the flow of time. Um, the entropy being low also means the state being special, being, being selected in this very special way. And we somehow also, there's another thread of thinking in cosmology that tells us we um, want to have a theory where there's nothing special yeah. about the universe, where right. it's typical in some way. It's one of the motivations so, from, from, that's from Alan Guth. Yeah, and, 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 and certainly I was raised on that motivation mm -hmm. when I, you know, starting from graduate school. So there's a really profound tension there, and, and no one's gotten to the bottom of it. And and it may it may be entirely the case that we that, that that's the wrong question actually. So I think it's a very very important to step back and and wonder. Are we really asking the right question here? But, and I wonder that myself some of the time, <laughs> and and other times I do buy into it. So integrating all three together, uh, probabilities, infinities, and the arrow of time, what's your overview of the multiverse theory? So, so everyone agrees the arrow of time is a tricky, profound problem. Okay. One of my concerns with some of the conversation that people have is that they're using infinities to hide assumptions they're making. So they think they're addressing the arrow of time when really they've slipped, slipped the assumptions in through the use, sloppy use of infinities. So that's one concern. Now, on a, on a may, maybe more positive note, I think some of my um, work on probability is suggesting there may be a way forward where the infinities and measure problems that relate to the predictive power may be resolved more favorably than I thought. I, I'm still, it's not clear. I, th I think there's, there's some pretty serious problems looming, but I'm taking a closer look. So my work on probabilities has caused me to take a closer look. So just as a, a, a final, uh, what's your probability that there is such a thing as a multiverse? Okay, I, I guess I'd have to say um, 10%. Oh, and that and that's whoa. and that's like a million times higher than last time we talked. <laughs> so it's it's quite a change for me.